Mr. Betterbid, uh, he's on vacation. Ms. Graman, Mr. Johnson, yes. Mr. McCracken, Mr. Rich, yes. Mr. Shepard, Mr. Caldwell, Mr. Rosenthal, yes. Mr. Reese, yes. Ms. Bergallo, Chairman Thomas. Yes. All right, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Reese, and the Chairman can, uh, oh no, and Mr. Rich can vote. Mr. Johnson, yes. Mr. Rich, yes. Mr. Reese, yes. Chairman Thomas. Yes. Let's see, Mr. Rosenthal, yes, Mr. Reese, yes, Chairman Thomas. Yes. I move. Chairman Thomas, Mr. Rosenthal. Yes. Oh, and, and uh, Mr. Johnson, you were at that one also. I'll move. Johnson, yes. Mr. Rosenthal. Yes. Chairman Thomas. Yes. Mr. Rich? Yes. Mr. Rosenthal? Yes. Mr. Reese? Yes. Chairman Thomas? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Reese? Yes. Mr. Rosenthal? Yes. Johnson, yes. Mr. Rich, yes. Mr. Reese, yes. Chairman Thomas. Yes. And uh, Double Stone Holdings, DBA 160039. Second. Mr. Rosenthal. Yes. Mr. Reese, yes. Chairman Thomas. Yes. Keith Wilson, ZBA 150041. I'll move. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Rich? Yes. Chairman Thomas? Yes. Uh, vouchers, February 20, 2017, 865 and March 2017, 865. Is there a motion? I move to pay PEC. <laughs> second. And a, or a second? Second. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Yo, yo, you're always the first one to jump on me. Okay, our one hearing. Uh, Rook Cedar Grove Lane Properties LLC ZBA 17-00003. Use variance for the amended site plan which the applicant wishes to change a previous approval to construct a restaurant at 16 and 18 Cedar Grove Lane, Somerset. Block 424.02, Lot 2101 in the R40 zone. Okay. May, may I please ask a question? What's different from we already gave approval? You, you they're, they're, he's going to explain that. That's, That's why let they're the here. Uh, record reflect. Put the, press the mute button, it'll turn green. Vince. Thank you. Vince. Yep. Vince. Let the record reflect. Yep, 732. Dr. Kraken is here. Turn on your mic, though, Bruce, okay? You get Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Peter Lamford appearing on behalf of the applicant. Uh, in 2009, we appeared before the board uh, and received a use variance and site plan to construct a hotel and a restaurant. Uh, in 2009, we had a generic building for the restaurant because we did not have a user. 
tonight we're here, actually we're not here for the use variance because that was already granted in 2009. Technically we're here just for the site plan and a related uh, bulk variance. Uh, so I will present three witnesses very briefly uh, and then uh, hopefully we can get Mr. Dominic to where he needs to go. <laughs> <coughs> My first witness is Mr. Yeager. Okay, we now have Mr. Caldwell, and he's missed nothing of yep. any significance at this point. Is that because I spoke? <laughs> okay. If you'll raise your right hand for me. You solemnly swear or affirm to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. S uh, state and spell your last name for the record. Scott Yeager, Y-A-E-G-E-R. Mr. Yeager, by whom are you employed? A radius hospitality with a management company. Okay, and in January of 2010, you testified before the board uh, in the original application. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, and at that time, uh, we talked about building a restaurant, and you testified uh, that it was the intent of Radius on behalf of the applicant to try to get a national brand on that site. Is that correct? That is correct. Can you indicate to the board what you've been doing in the last six years to get a national brand on that site? Uh, we've worked with most every brand out there that franchises, and unfortunately, those brands are looking for A sites. We don't meet that criteria for them. They are looking for sites around malls, around heavily populated areas. Even with the uh, hotels and the amount of density in that market, they consider it a B site, not something they're looking to do. Okay. As a result, uh, what are we proposing to do on the site now? We are uh, looking to do a restaurant called 2020 Tap House. It is, it is our restaurant. It would be our brand. Um, it is very similar to many of the uh, chain restaurants that are out there, bistro style. Um, you know, nice restaurant, mixed uh, menu, appetizers, sandwiches, salads, pizzas, entrees, a uh, very wide menu. Uh, has a small bar in it, uh, will be part of it. Uh, craft beer is one of the big crazes today. Uh, we will, you know, try to monopolize on that as well. Uh, so that's what the restaurant uh, is what we're looking for. Okay, and Radius, which operates the hotel, will also then operate this facility and manage it. That is correct. Okay, and obviously you're... Uh, aware that there were certain restrictions that were imposed on the hours of operation as part of the original approval, and uh, you're sc still going to be bound by all of the other conditions in the original approval. Is that correct? Yes, and we're fine with those hours. Okay, thank you. I have no further questions. Okay, let the record show. Laura is now here. I guess it's partly a decision of yours whether she's missed anything that would affect the overall... I don't think so. It's just a little history. That's fine. She was here for the original one. They just yeah. explained. You remember the original one? Boy, do I remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a few, quite a few hearings. So. Okay. Any questions? What? What were the hours of operation? I, I have the resolution, but actually, it's, it's, in, the, it's in the resolution. But let me just. It basically said that we were going to cease or close on <coughs> Monday through Thursdays. No later than midnight uh, Thursday through Monday. I'm sorry, Sunday through Wednesday and then 2 a.m. Thursday uh, through Saturday. Okay. Closing time. These were all approved before. So, yeah. That was where, what that was makes a, sense. Yeah. I, I actually thought you were more restricted, and I was surprised we weren't asking for more now. But that sounds right. Okay. Any any questions? Well, we'll open to the public, which there seems to be no public. All right. So we'll move forward. Okay. Next, Mr. Sapphire. Ready? Solemnly swear, affirm, tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Do. Uh, spelled like I think, or last name? Uh, Sapphire is S A P H I R E. Okay. Mr. Sapphire, what is your occupation? I'm an architect. And are you licensed in the state of New Jersey? Yes, I am. How long have you been so licensed? 35 years. 
we accept it. it was All right. Mr. Sapphire, uh, you prepared uh, the uh, architectural plans for the restaurant, correct? Yes, I have. Okay, and you were not the architect of record when it came to the hotel? That's correct. But you're familiar with the materials, colors, and everything else with respect to the hotel? Yes, I am. Okay, and you also uh, are aware that when we were here many years ago, we talked about trying to have uh, some synergy between the restaurant and the uh, hotel. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, I've marked actually as an exhibit, I think, A2, which shows the exterior of the building as we're proposing it, and I have a handout that you prepared which is two sheets, uh, and actually I marked uh, the back sheet as A3, so I will hand it out to the board members. Uh, A3 is the interior floor plan. Mr. Sapphire, can you describe what the exterior of the building will look like, the materials that we will use, uh, the colors, and again, in doing that, also relate back to the hotel? Yes, I will. Um, the, uh, the drawing that you have in front of you that was just passed out was a uh, revision that was uh, done just over the last week after we met with uh, township representatives and uh, reviewed some of the requests that was in the, in the, re, uh, the letter from responses. So in that, we added uh, a window frame and a window set that faces out onto Cedar Grove. Uh, we adjusted colors slightly to match up with what was done in the hotel, and I'll go through those in a little bit more detail. And we provided for a centerpiece that is matched on both the entrance elevation that faces into the, uh, the development as well as the elevation that faces out to Cedar Grove. Uh, as you recall, the, the primary building materials for the hotel are an ether system, a stucco system, and they are primarily in these two colors. Uh, those are actual samples of the color, so please excuse the fact that printers sometimes make those colors a little bit differently, but it is our testimony tonight that we will be matching the colors that are used in the hotel uh, and those stucco colors are shown here and they're referenced here on the plan uh, as these horizontal bars on the majority of the building uh, and they're listed here on the, on the plan. Again, those will match what was done in the hotel. The base as well, we decided to, to raise a little bit in terms of height, so it's about five foot tall, uh, is a wainscot of cultured stone. The actual sample of the cultured stone is on, the, on this, this board. It's a little bit heavy, so I'll just put it up here rather than on the easel. That's all right. That's good. Um, and this is the cultured stone that is used in the hotel, uh, and that's what we're proposing to use in the restaurant building as well. Uh, as you come around to the center zone, this, com this component, which is sort of the, the focal point piece as well as the entrance piece that faces into the development, that element is going to be done with a, uh, a reconstituted or a recycled material called the Nietzsche stone. It's a fiberglass and concrete material. These are color samples actual color samples of what was being used. Uh, there, these are the colors that are represented in the rendering that you have in front of you and on this drawing here. We'll turn the corners on this little extension piece that, you know, it extends out so that that sort of draws your eye to the entrance piece, and that same elevation is matched on the Cedar Grove side, so it does not look like the back of the building. It really has a, a front of the building approach. Um, so from the exterior side, that's, um, uh, primarily what the materials are in colors. Uh, there has also been some discussion regarding the building height, uh, and we went through that again with the professionals. Um, the top of the building height is noted on your plans and is part of the uh, part of the bulk variance. The reason that we have the height here, if you know the site plan, you know there's no place to put mechanical units or anything on the ground, nor would we want to. So we put the mechanical units, of course, on the roof. There are two mechanical units for the HVAC. There is a uh, exhaust hood. Uh, for the cooking hoods, there's an exhaust fan, and then there's a makeup air unit for that hood. 
We've put them on a parapet wall or behind a parapet wall that is throughout the, the uh, entire footprint of the building. And that parapet wall will be approximately five feet high from roof surface to the top of parapet. And that'll prevent these units from being seen from any direction as you enter, you're on the site or you're driving past on Cedar Grove. So architecturally, it's a very important component. It does raise the, the technical building height, uh, but it is a really important component to be able to make the building work where it is in this little island right in the middle of a very densely uh, traveled spot. I'm sorry, can you briefly take the uh, board through the interior of the building? Sure. This is the second page, which is the same of what, as what was presented uh, some time ago. Entrance component, this is that little projection we were referring to that faces into the parking lot. And this is its similar projection that faces out towards Cedar Grove. Uh, entrance primarily is through a revolving door. There are two side doors as well for emergency egress or ingress. Uh, this is barrier-free entrances, of course. Coming into a central lobby space, front desk. Restrooms will be to your left. Primary dining area, as you can see, wraps around. And then a bar area up in the front corner with the ability for a private room in the back section of this primary dining space. There is no occupiable space. There's only one story. It's the downstairs is all used for um, uh, staff, for uh, refrigerators, for freezers, and for storage, and so on. Again, there's no place on the site to, uh, for us to store those materials. So everything goes into the basement and come up and down through the kitchen. Final layout in, in this area here, there'll be a little dumb waiter that'll help us carry materials up and down. And that'll be from within the building as well. There's a side entrance that uh, gains access directly to the kitchen space. And then there's an exit door here, uh, as well as, of course, as we said before, up here in the front. Okay. And th the parapet takes us up to the 19 feet. Is that correct, roughly? I'm not sure if it's 19 or not. top of the tower, the top, the very top of the coping is 29. Okay. Right. And then the, the, the majority, about 80% of the roof line is uh, three feet lower than that. So it's 26. Okay. And, and then the roof height itself is five feet below that. So the, the roof is about 21. Correct. Okay. And, and again, the, the highest points are the architectural elements of the towers. Correct. The entrance tower and then it's, it's match facing up to Cedar Grove. Okay. Uh, staying on the outside, are we proposing any signage on the building? We are in two locations. Uh, the signage is, is enlarged here on this on this map. Uh, it'll be within. It's a channel letter with a lot of internal lighting to it, so it'll be backlit. Uh, and of course, it says 2020 Tap House. And uh, for the record, the, the ordinance allows us to have one sign. When we went to the historic commission, the historic commission actually recommended that we try to replicate the front of the building on the Cedar Grove Lane side so that it looks like another front and that we have signage on both sides. So technically that second sign on uh, is a variance and we requested the board grant that variance. Uh, in my notice, I had language requesting any all variances that the board may deem appropriate. And staff also recommended that signage on the front so that it looked, the front looks like the front instead of the back. Correct. I have no further questions of Mr. Sapphire. Any board questions? Hey, uh, I'll open again technically to the public and then we'll close. Go ahead. Mr. Ardman. Do I refer to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And your name for the record. Uh, first initial F, Mitchell Ardman, A-R-D-M-A-N. Mr. Ardman, you were the original site engineer on this project and testified in 2009 and 2010? That's correct. Okay, and uh, we, as a result of that, on the original application, had shown a generic footprint for the restaurant. Is that correct? That's correct. And there were certain variances attended to the setback with respect to that. That's correct, and I will be testifying as an engineer and a planner for this evening, oh, okay. for the record. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> okay, and you're licensed both ways, and you haven't lost them since the last time. That is so that is correct. <laughs> you got to okay. keep them, you know. You just 
<laughs> Vince, Vince has put me under a lot of pressure. Um, Mr. Three questions, that's all you get. <laughs> Mr. Ardman, you prepared an exhibit uh, upon which you're going to rely this evening, which I've marked A1, which is a colored rendering of one of the sheets that we submitted in conjunction with this application? That is correct. Okay. We're putting it on the board, it is sheet SP3. Okay. And can you indicate to the board where the proposed restaurant is on sheet SP3? Certainly. So on the left here, we have uh, Cedar Grove Lane. The site is, uh, is rendered. Uh, the lighter coloring in the center here is the hotel that's been constructed. All the lighter shade coloring is what has been constructed. We're really just down to the pad for the restaurant. The restaurant pad, as we show here, is in, in dark brown. On your sheet and um, on this rendering, you can see a dashed red line, which represents the original approved uh, restaurant All building. Right. All right. And briefly, can you indicate the difference between this footprint and the footprint that we had shown on our concept plan seven years ago. Certainly. So as you can see, they are very similar. We got an approval for a front yard setback originally of 40.5 uh, feet, or actually a foot more setback. We're at 41.5 feet. The uh, square footage of the restaurant originally um, was 6,288 square feet. It, we are actually reduced a little bit to 6,137 square feet. And uh, just regarding the, the setback and the impact of the setback, although the building is slightly longer, as Mr. Healy noted in his report, the square footage of the building uh, that's in variance, which is front of the 55 foot, is actually reduced. The original approval, there was 1,200 square feet 1,269 square feet in front of that line. We're at uh, 1,062 square feet in front of the line. So it's a, a very similar impact and uh, layout of the building. Okay. And, and in your opinion, does the change in the layout or the, the difference in the bulk variance for the front of the building have any significant impact on the overall design of the project and what was represented seven years ago? No, I don't believe so, and I think the, the architectural features that, that were shown tonight, uh, the enhanced signage, the enhanced details, which face Cedar Grove, uh, really make it feel more of a front of the building as opposed to a back side of the building. Okay, in, in addition, all of the other variances, such as the coverage variances uh, that were granted uh, seven years ago, do not change as a result of this application? That is correct. As I said, we're, if anything, slightly less by a few square feet. Okay, and, and just very briefly, uh, just touch on the landscaping that we're proposing in conjunction with this so the board has it. I know the board is always concerned about landscaping. Yes, and, and that again follows similarly. We have on the interior of the project facing the hotel, we have um, uh, some shade trees around it and some ornamental trees on the corners along with shrubs between the parking lot and the building. And more importantly, um, facing Cedar Grove, we have uh, street trees uh, along that frontage again with uh, ornamental flowering shrubs and um, some or ornamental trees on the corner as well. So we've, uh, you know, it's important for us to have a nice frontage as well as, as for the township. Okay, and nothing else changed from the original plan. All the lighting is the same, all the parking lot is the same. We, we haven't changed parking spaces, anything else? That all still matches. We have our accessible entrance to the front of the building, uh, so that all is the same. Thank you, I have no further questions. Any board questions? Again, then there's no public, so if you... I have no additional witnesses. I just, one statement. I, I think, as Ms. Grama, when she came in here this evening, said, I remember those hearings seven years ago, and it was a, a long, arduous process. I, I hope that my client delivered what he said he was going to deliver. I think the hotel is appropriate in that spot. It's an enhancement. Uh, and I think a, a restaurant, as we promised in the front of it, especially with the architecture and everything, will also be an enhancement, not only to the property, uh, but to the community. So I would appreciate the approval for the Just restaurant. A, uh, uh, curiosity, and this has nothing to do with the approval, but what kind of a restaurant is that? Can you describe? Yeah. Somebody describe he had to testify, the 2020 but, tap house? Yeah. Mr. Yeager had testified before you came in, but he'll... Oh, sorry about that. That's okay. Um, 
So the restaurant is uh, kind of a bistro style American fair. It'll have everything from appetizers and salads and sandwiches and pizza and entrees and those types of things. Um, what not, level? Uh, not upscale, but not low scale. It, it, we fall right in the middle. Uh, the bar will feature the craft beers uh, will be most of what we have on tap. And so that's the big craze today. Um, you know, when we talked about this back in 2009, uh, you know, we looked at much different restaurants that were around back then. And today we're we're just trying to capitalize on what's popular. So is it like at the level of Ruby Tuesday? Or? Um, I think it'll be. And again, I, we have, uh, you know, a board of the interior colors. I think it'll be a, a slight bit more upscale than that. Um, although ceilings, you know, open bar joy ceilings, so that you get a you get a, a more casual feel. Yet the finishes are more upscale, so it'll have a very nice feel to it. Restaurant <coughs> Do you have a liquor license? The hotel, the, probably. Yeah. The liquor license was part of the hotel liquor license, uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, about seven years ago, we, we have received an exemption from the state because normally the restaurant has to be part of the hotel, uh, but we went to the state and got approval to have the liquor license in the separate building. But yes, we do have a liquor license. Again, oh, go ahead. That, that was Is, my only is 2020 a franchise? No, not at this point. Not uh, at this point. It is. It's, uh, it's proprietary to us. For the first one. Okay. Second one. Yeah. Uh, well, we have we have one in a hotel out in Ohio, but it's it was first concept. It's a little different than what this is going to be, but we run that one there as well. They they have your own uh, your own colors. I mean, like the the red on the left hand side there. Is that is that part of the? Well, red and yellow are probably the two most commonly used colors in food. It's just it's it 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 is used everywhere. People associate that with restaurants. So, um, but this is this color mix today is it it fits with today's standards and the way things are are built for restaurants. So it adds I think it adds a a nice appeal for that tower. One of the things somebody mentioned paperwork, there's not going to be outdoor facilities, correct? There is none. Uh, we were not permitted to have them in the original application. In the future, we may come back if we feel it's appropriate, but we're not seeking any outdoor seating at this time. And then and just, I guess, for the record, everything contained in the first approval is going to be that's appropriate. It's going to be uh, complied with in the second. All the we we complied with all the conditions discussed yeah. here. Whatever. We complied with all the conditions of the original approval with respect to the hotel, and we will comply with all of the conditions of the original approval with respect to the restaurant. Okay, I, I think that it did take a while to get the uh, first approval, but I, I would be the. I'd be remiss not to say that I think that this applicant has pretty much delivered uh, what, <laughs> what was expected. I just can't believe it's been seven years already. <laughs> we just get older and older, Bob. That's what happens. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, again, there's no public. So if you're finished, we'll uh, look at a, any discussion or resolution, or not resolution, uh, motion. motion. Yep. Any public? No public. No public. Yeah, I, I move. Okay. Second. Any other discussion? Go ahead. Mr. Grauman? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. McCracken? Yes. Mr. Rich? Yes. Mr. Caldwell? Yes. Mr. Rosenthal? Yes. Chairman Thomas? Yes. Good luck with this one also. To all a good night. <laughs> Anyone like to continue or someone want to move to close? <laughs> move to close. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. See you all in two weeks.